In this video, we're going to go over an integrated rate equation example, and I'm going to put in some other general comments which will apply not just to second order. So let's go ahead and look at the question itself, and let's kind of ignore the title. So the question says acetaldehyde undergoes a thermal decomposition to methane and carbon monoxide. So here is the actual equation. Then underneath, it gives us the rate law expression, rate equals k, and there's the equation. And then it gives us the actual value for k. And it's giving us 2 times 10 to the minus 2 liters per, and then it's mole times hours, at some temperature. And then the first question we're going to do is to calculate the half-life. So let me give a few comments about this before we actually launch into doing the integrated rate equation. A few things. First of all, these are all colorless gases, so you know there might be a way to follow this uh, spectrochemically. But another thing one could think about is since it's one mole of gas decomposing to two moles of gas, one way to be following this might actually be to look at the pressure change in the container, because we would notice a pressure change, we'd get more moles of gas. Let's look at another comment. First of all, the title's a dead giveaway. But if we go in and look at the rate equation, we can actually see another dead giveaway because that little two there is our clue that this is second order because there's only one reagent. So we only have one power to worry about. And again, if we had more powers, we just add them all up. But here it's second order. So if I had nothing else but this, I don't need the equation. If I've got this, I know it's second order. So there's one way of knowing it's second order. And then there's one more way of knowing it's second order. We've got here our value for k. The number is not such the important point. The point is we've got liters per mole times hours. So it's a bit strung out, but what you've got is per hour. So there's a per time unit, which every k has. And then you've got liters per mole, which of course is molarity upside down. So that is molarity to the minus 1, time to the minus 1, and so in order to make the rate equation work, we can see that we would have to have an overall power of molarity to the power of 2 in the rate equation, which, lo and behold, there it is, power of 2. So if you didn't have this equation and you were just given this k, focus on the units and you can go back and you can figure out what the overall order is. You can't tell the individual orders if you're just given the units for k, but you can certainly tell what the overall order is. And the reason why this is so important is because you have three sets of equations that you are going to be using when you try to do an integrated rate law question. And so the problem is, if you use the wrong ones, you can still get an answer. What do I mean by that? Let me just show you this real quick. This is them being summarized. Don't worry too much about the part on the bottom, although it's a key. If you see here, here we have our three pairs. These are, going, these are gained by going through and actually integrating each of the three orders that we talk about, 0, 1st, and 2nd. And so you'll notice that they all have the same terms in them. The problem is they're all kind of different. And they're arranged in pairs because, you know, 0, 1, 2. Pretty simple, huh? Now, the thing is, if you go picking, say, this set here, which is not what you should be using for this problem we're looking at in this video, you can put numbers into it, and you could get a number to come out, but it's not going to be the right answer. So I guess it feels a bit like thermodynamics, right? You have more equations than you know what to do with. So remember, decide the overall order before you start launching into this stuff. Otherwise, you're probably going to have problems. So since we already decided from all the clues that it has to be zero, th oh, sorry, second order, we know we're going to use these. So you know, at this point, these other ones don't matter. All right, so let's go back at our question. First of all, what it wants to know is the half-life. So that's a usually a fairly straightforward thing if they have been given you enough data to, to work the problem. So let's... Okay, so let's start. Oh, first of all, we're going to find half-life. Oops, there we go. Half-life. And what have we been given? It says 0.1 moles of CH3CHO into one liter 
at 527 degrees C. Now, if you go back and look at the text on the question, you'll actually notice that we talk about everything else in the question at the same temperature. This is because, as you are going to learn, there's an Arrhenius equation that shows how the rate constant changes with temperature. We're not going to do that to you as well as other stuff. So it's going to stay at a given temperature. So we don't really need to know what it is. It's just going to stay the same. All right, so let's look. What we need is the half-life equation for second order. So this is what it looks like. You know, and like I said, there's two other half-life equations. So if you go pull the wrong one, you'll still get a number. That's the problem. All right. So this, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. What we have to do is just put the numbers in. So let's look at our value. First of all, our k. I'm just pulling this from the questions text. 2 times 10 to the minus 2, molarity to the minus 1, hours to the minus 1. Notice the units on this are hours for time. That's kind of a clue. This is probably not a very fast reaction. Let's keep making this go. This is going to be a big reciprocal. So that's my K. Now we have my A0. 0 0.1 moles in one liter. So basically 0.1 molar. So once we do that, we get 500 hours. So again, this is pretty slow. I can say that now. Now, what I want to point out is if we were to then go and try to figure out how long it would take for the next half-life to occur, we wouldn't be then starting off with 0.1 moles in one liter, would we? We would then have half that. We'd have 0.05 moles in one liter. So what this would mean is this number would be half as big. This isn't going to change. This is constant as long as you stay with the same reaction and the same temperature. But this would be half its value. The vessel would be the same, but you'd have half the number of moles. So guess what? This number would be doubled, and that's a characteristic feature of second order. If it's first order, we wouldn't even need this concentration because we would just get the K, and all we have in that is LUN2. If it's zeroth order, you notice that the dependency is up the other way. Now the number's on the top. All right, so we have the half-life. This is also useful, too, because even though half-life is variable, this tells us how long, long for half original amount to react. So we'll have half the original amount of stuff left. Half of it will have reacted. This is a useful number when we go to do the second part of the calculation. OK, so this is part B on the question. It says after 200 hours, how much CH3, CH, oops, CHO remain? Now again, be very careful with questions like this. All these equations use A, and A is the original reagent. So be careful to see what it's saying here. Is it asking for how much reagent remains, or is it asking for how much reagent has reacted? Because that's not the same thing, right? That's the complementary bit of information. So just be really careful what you're being asked for and what you've been told. If you're working the other way to find a time, make sure they're giving you the amount of unreacted stuff. If not, if they're giving you the amount of stuff that has reacted, you've got to subtract that from your original amount. OK, so let's see how we do this. We need to get out our integrated rate equation for second order. And all of these can be manipulated a little bit, so I'm just going to write it down to start with. And you'll notice if you don't have k, even if this was the only part that you were being asked for on the problem, because you need k, if you didn't have k but they had given you half-life, the first thing you'd be doing would be going up here to get k. So you have to have k to make this work. All right. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So it's saying how much has remain is remaining. So this means we're looking for this. It's the amount that's still there after a given time t. So we do 1 over a minus 1 over. And then we have our concentration. We already figured it up here. This is 0.1. And I'm just going to write the unit down. Molar equals. And then we have 
k, 2 times 10 to the minus 2 molarity per hour. And then we have our time, 200 hours. And of course, it goes without saying that make sure your time units make sense. And we're kind of going to assume you know all the basic time conversions between seconds and hours and minutes and such. So just watch for that. OK, so what this gives us now is that 1 over a minus 1 over 0.1 molar equals, and this number just comes out to be 4. And if you look, the hours goes away, so it just becomes molarity to the minus 1. This number, actually, if you look at it, is 1 over 0.1. So this is actually 10 molarity to the minus 1. So 1 over a minus 10. So again, 1 over 0.1. That gives me 10. And then this is 1 over molarity. So, oops, molarity to the minus 1. Again, 1 over a minus 1 over 0.1 is 10. And then 1 over molarity is molarity to the minus 1 equals 4 molarity to the minus 1. So I can collect those terms up onto the other side. And I'm going to get 1 over a equals, and this was negative, so I'm going to add it on that side. So it becomes 14 molarity to the minus 1. And so a basically is 1 over 14. So that gives us a is 0 0.071 molar. And of course, it's a concentration, so it has to be molar. So if you don't get units of molar, then double check all your math because something's happening. All right. Now, that's the second part of the question. The third part of the question was a percentage. So let's have a look at that real quick. It's a pretty simple thing to say. And this is, again, illustrating another way about how we might give you the data. The percent that remains after 200 hours. So the percent remaining, that's a pretty simple thing to do, is going to be 0.071 molar over the original concentration, which was 0.1 molar, times it by 100%. And what we get is 71%. So it's a 70% unreacted. And then, of course, what that also means is 29% reacted. So that's the thing to keep in mind. I could work this another way. I could say if 29% of it has reacted after 200 hours, then, for example, what was the original concentration? That might be another way we could do it. So that's something else to keep in mind. There's lots of different ways these can be done. But again, you have variations on a theme. You could be asked for K, half-life, original amount, or just the amount after a given amount of time, or even just the amount of time. So that's an example of an integrated rate equation. Doing other orders isn't really that much different. The only difference, of course, is that you have a different starting set of, of equations. So sometimes the math is a little bit different because some use natural logs. And, and some just use straight concentration. But all this stuff about watching what you've been given, that still holds. And making sure that you check all your units and they're all consistent, that also still holds too.